If you want an amazing looking chest that is as strong as it looks, then try these three intermediate and advanced bodyweight exercises to build your chest muscle. Hey there, Coach Tyler here, and today I'm gonna show you three intermediate and three advanced bodyweight exercises that you can use to build chest muscle. These exercises are some of the best bodyweight exercises that I've ever found at not only creating more strength for the muscles in your chest, but also at helping to balance all of the muscles of your shoulders, making your upper back, neck, or shoulders feel amazing, and to help you become more flexible and resilient at the same time. So here's how this will work. First, I'm gonna go through each exercise and I'll tell you how to do the intermediate and advanced variations with perfect form. After that, I'm gonna put these three intermediate exercises and these three advanced exercises into follow along workouts that you can use from the comfort of your own home to build chest muscle in just seven minutes. So, without further ado, let's jump into the first exercise. Okay, this is an intermediate exercise called the Hindu push-up which is a wonderful exercise for strengthening your chest and stretching your upper back, your hamstrings, and even strengthening your core all at the same time. So here's how to do it with perfect form. All right, to start, you're gonna come into what's called a downward dog position. So bring your hands down to the ground, press your palms on the ground, and the whole time you're doing this, squeeze your fingertips into the ground. That little bit of squeezing is gonna activate your hands and your wrists. It's gonna protect and strengthen your wrists while you go through this exercise. From there, you can press your toes on the ground, come up to that push-up position. Now, drive your butt up and towards the sky, and the first thing I want you to think about is to bring your belly button towards your thighs, okay? And how you can do that is you can think about pressing your fingertips towards the, the room in front of you. So belly button to thighs, you can be all the way up on your toes if you want, but really try to get that nice long spine, okay? From there, lock your legs, and then finally drop your heels last. At no point should we be rounding our back like this. We really wanna to try to find that nice, flat, neutral spine, that flexibility in this position, okay? From here, you're gonna bend your elbows and you're gonna bring your nose right between your hands if you can. And you're gonna trace your nose along the ground until you're fully extended. You're gonna squeeze your glutes, drop your shoulder blades back and down and come to what's called an upward dog position. So this is your inhale. And then you're gonna exhale as you press back to the top position without bending your elbows. So exhale, squeeze the core, squeeze the core, squeeze the core, come to that top position. So you can find a nice flow with Hindu push-ups that looks like this. You're gonna go. And you can maintain that flow the whole entire time. Now, this is gonna work your chest muscles, your shoulders, your triceps, your lower back, your core, your quads, everything. But the big thing I wanna make sure that you do when you do the Hindu push-up is that you do it with good form. So the big keys here are as you come up to that top position, squeeze your glutes. It's really important that you squeeze your glutes because I don't want anybody hurting their lower back. Next, don't shrug your shoulders and push them up towards your ears. Instead, drive them down and pull them back as you come to that top position, all right? And finally, as you press from here to the downward dog, drive your toes into the ground and really think about stomach, 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 squeeze your core. That's gonna help you make sure you're not gonna get injured as you come into this downward dog position, all right? So that exercise, again, called the Hindu push-up. It's a wonderful push-up, it's an intermediate variation. You're gonna wanna go slow and controlled, practice it at first, and as you do this more and more, you're gonna get better and better and when you get better and you can get that nice speed going like I showed you right there, with good form, it's gonna really strengthen and stretch your entire body. All right, this is an advanced body weight chest exercise called the Dive Bomber Push-Up. And it's literally one of my favorite upper body exercises, but it's an advanced exercise. So make sure you only do this if you already can do a lot of the exercises that would lead up to this, like Hindu push-ups or upward and downward dogs. So. To do dive bomber push-ups, you're gonna start by coming into a push-up position. You're gonna bring your hands to the ground, squeeze the ground with your fingertips to really activate those hands and wrists. Get into that push-up position. Now from there, drive your butt back and think about bringing your belly button towards your thighs. Then finally lock the legs out and let the 
the heels drop down towards the ground. Now, from there, you're gonna bend your elbows. Don't let them flare out, keep them down towards the ground. Bring your nose in between your, your hands. Trace the ground with your nose as you come into that full extended position and then press up, squeeze the glutes, and again, pull the shoulder blades back and down. We wanna make sure we have good posture in this position. So everything is active here, especially your glutes, because if you don't squeeze your glutes, then you're using your lower back instead of your butt, okay? Now from here, we're gonna come back down, bend the elbows to that fully extended position. Ooh, the chest muscles gonna be working. And then press back in to the downward dog position. Now, if you're doing this slow and controlled, you're gonna find this is a crazy hard push-up variation. Now, for the breathing rhythm, you're gonna inhale as you come through, and you're gonna exhale at the top. You're gonna inhale as you come down, and exhale as you push back up to the downward dog position. A couple things here. Don't round your back in the downward dog like this. You wanna make sure we think about having a nice, elongated, flat back like this. And again, make sure as you come through and you come up to the top position, you're squeezing your glutes, you're still squeezing your core, and your shoulder blades are back and down the entire time. Such a great exercise, really strengthening the upper body and really creating a lot of flexibility at the same time. But again, move slow and control when you start and really master the technique before you go on to doing faster versions of this exercise. That's a dive bomber push-up and how to do it in perfect form. Real quick, before we go to exercise number two, where I'll share the second exercise you can use to tone your chest, I wanna ask you for a quick favor. If you're enjoying this content and wanna see more of it, hit the subscribe button and click the little bell icon so you can get an update every time we release a new video like this. It helps us get noticed more and our videos will help you transform your body faster. Okay, let's head back to the video and talk about an exercise that will balance the muscles of your shoulders, which will help make your shoulders feel amazing, all while building your chest. All right, this is a fantastic exercise for strengthening your chest, your core, and the muscles in between your shoulder blades, which are gonna be responsible for improving your posture, which is really awesome, especially when you're trying to work your chest out. You can't have it all be tight. Let's strengthen those muscles too so you work your chest and improve your posture at the same time. So this exercise called the wide stance, low chair, row and fly. And here's how to do it with perfect form, all right? Come into a push-up position on a chair, so you'll need a nice sturdy chair. Make sure it's nice and sturdy, okay? I don't want anybody's chair tipping over because they made sure that this wasn't sturdy, okay? And if it's not a chair, you can use a couch. Just something that's like about knee height is a good place to start. Come into that push-up position. If you can, squeeze the chair or the couch or whatever with your fingertips. You can even turn your hands out and squeeze like this. When you squeeze, you activate your wrists, and that's really important, okay? And you're gonna go a wide stance now, so you're gonna be like nice and wide, hips, hip, or wider than the hip width. The wider you go, the easier this will be. The more narrow you go, the harder this will be. So go nice and wide when you're starting. From there, squeeze your glutes, squeeze your, your legs, squeeze your core, and bring your shoulders down towards your hips. Tall to the top of your head. Now, find some balance on one arm, like my left arm here, and you're gonna go row by driving your elbow back as far as you can, and then you're gonna go fly by driving the backs of your hand or your thumb as far back as you can without twisting and rotating your body. So again, row, squeeze those muscles, fly, squeeze those muscles, put that hand down, take your time to switch sides, row, and fly on that side. Again, legs tight, glutes tight, core tight, shoulders down, tall to the top of your head. That's what you're gonna do the entire time you're doing this exercise, okay? And again, if you wanna make this a little harder, bring your feet a little closer together, that's gonna create more of a balance issue on your core. So row and fly. You're gonna feel your chest muscle working right here, your core muscles working right here, and for the arm that's coming up and back, you're gonna feel those muscles between your shoulder blades working on this exercise. Okay, one final thing is I don't want your body to sway from side to side a bunch as you put your hands down. So as you switch hands, try not to go like this and have to kick your hip out as you go side to side. You should think about everything stays perfectly tight and still right there. Your hands are on the chair or on the couch, whatever it is. You're gonna just row and fly. And as you switch hands, nothing changes. Your core stays tight, your glutes stay tight, your legs stay tight, your posture is good. And you're gonna repeat that over and over again, nice and slow and controlled, and really trying to contract those muscles in between your shoulder blades as you drive your elbow back and as you drive your hand and your thumb back on the row and the fly. Fantastic exercise, core, chest, 
and posture all at the same time. All right, this exercise is a killer exercise for strengthening the muscles between your shoulder blades and working your core and working your chest all at the same time, but it's an advanced exercise. So take your time, follow along to it, and go slow and controlled at first because I want to make sure you're doing it with perfect form. Form first, intensity second. So this exercise is called the narrow stance row and fly. And here's how to do it with perfect form. You're going to come into a push-up position with your hands on the ground and your feet are going to be just about hip width apart. Now to start, what I want you to do is I want you to bring your hands real close together where your thumbs are pretty much touching. And I want you to maybe like be a little lenient, put your legs a little bit wider than you normally would for a push-up. So maybe like right there on the edges of my mat, which would be slightly wider than hip width. So come into that push-up position, squeeze the legs by extending the knees all the way, squeeze the glutes by tucking your pelvis. See, I'm tucking my pelvis and squeezing my glutes. Your core is gonna fire no matter what. Think about your shoulder blades coming back and down. So don't let your shoulder blades shrug up like this, back and down, and then tall to the top of your head. Now hold this position nice and tight as you transfer the weight to one of your hands. Now, as you transfer that weight, try not to rock from side to side. You're probably gonna move a little bit from side to side, but do as little as possible. Now, squeeze everything, and then you're gonna row your elbow back, trying to drive your elbow as far back as possible, and then you're gonna fly by bringing the back of your hand as far back as possible. Then you're gonna put your hand down, switch, and when you switch, you're gonna feel all the muscles shift, but try not to let your body shift as you switch hands. Now, you're gonna row and fly with that hand. And you're gonna go side to side, doing row, fly, really trying to squeeze the shoulder blades together at the top position as you go from side to side. Now what you're gonna notice is your core is gonna be screaming like crazy. And if you do it right, and you really squeeze the muscles as you're rowing and as you're flying, you're gonna feel all the muscles in between your shoulder blades working like crazy too. But go slow and controlled on this exercise because this is more about teaching you control and working on that posture or working on your core and your chest all at the same time. Now to make this exercise harder, which is crazy, right? Is start by taking your hands a little bit wider and putting your feet a little bit more narrow. So I'll you know, maybe give a fist width space in between your thumbs and I'll bring my feet straight back, maybe with a fist width in between them. So now we are in a very difficult position to keep your core tight and balance on one hand. So again, shift your weight to that one hand, don't let your hips or your shoulders rotate much. Take your time, go slow, row, and fly. Put your hand down, as little movement as possible. Feel all the muscles shift, but try not to let your body shift all that much. And then row, and then fly. Woo! So as you can see, this is definitely an advanced exercise that's gonna work your core, your chest, and all the muscles between your shoulder blades, which is gonna help your posture all at the same time. So there it is, the narrow stance row and fly and how to do it with perfect form. Hey, before we get to the third and final exercise to build your chest muscles, I wanted to mention that if you like the detail that we give to make sure you're not just exercising, but moving your body correctly, then you'll love the workouts we send to our members at warriormade.com. And that's because our workouts are like having a personal trainer built into your phone, tablet, or desktop computer. Every exercise in our workout is customized to your skill level. And we break down every exercise using our visual teaching system to make sure you're doing exercises with good form. What this means is you can get faster results and in a way that's much safer too. So to give our follow along home workout system a try, just click the link below either now or after you finish this video and you can try it for free on me. Okay, let's jump into the third and final exercise you can do from home to build your chest muscles. All right, this is an intermediate push-up exercise called the kneeling grasshopper push-up, and here's how to do it with perfect form. Okay, so you're gonna start by coming into a kneeling push-up position. So hands on the ground, squeeze the ground with your fingertips and press the entire palm into the ground. That's gonna help activate your hands and your wrists, which is gonna strengthen them and keep them nice and safe. Now you're gonna come into that kneeling push-up position by squeezing the glutes in the core so that my knees, hips, and shoulders are in one line. Now while I'm in this position, I'm going to slowly bring one knee up and to the side while I come down and rotate to the opposite side. So it looks like this. Okay, so I'm in a kneeling position. I'm gonna drop one knee. The other one can be up or down on the ground. And I'm gonna rotate my body and look towards that knee as I come down. 
and then press back up to the kneeling position. Come through, kneel, press back up, back to the kneeling position. So you can come up, down, however much space you need to get your leg through there. But the goal is just to go from side to side in this kneeling position, bring this knee up, and as you come down here, what you wanna do is you wanna look towards the knee, but you don't wanna let this shoulder shrug up as you come down and up. And at first, you might not be able to go all the way down and up, that's fine, just go halfway down, halfway back up. And after a while, you can go all the way down until your shoulder touches your hand, and then all the way back up. I love this exercise because you're working one side of your body at a time, you're practicing how to rotate and stabilize your core, which is a really valuable skill, and you're strengthening your upper body and core, and even creating some flexibility all at the same time. So that is the kneeling grass hopper push-up, just an amazing intermediate push-up exercise. All right, this is an advanced push-up variation that you can use to strengthen your chest and your core at the same time while really working on your body one side at a time, which is really powerful because when we just do normal push-ups like this, you know, we may have a little imbalance or a tweak here and there that's strengthening one side more than the other. So with this push-up variation, as you rotate from side to side, you're really thinking about one side at a time, which is gonna help create balance and symmetry across your body while also strengthening your core. So this exercise is called the grasshopper push-up, and here's how to do it with perfect form. So you're gonna start by coming into a push-up position, hands on the ground, squeeze the ground with your fingertips, press the entire palms on the ground. That's gonna help activate your hands and wrists, which protect your wrists and make them stronger in the long run. You're gonna come into a push-up position by locking the legs out, squeezing the legs, and then you're gonna tuck your pelvis like this. So if your tailbone's up like that, squeeze your glutes and tuck your pelvis while locking those legs out. Your core is gonna be tight already. And then think about your shoulder blades coming back and down like that. Tall to the top of your head, so no shrugging. Down. You wanna feel those lats, the muscles in your armpits working while you do this, okay? From there, you're gonna bring one leg up and across. If you have to keep your knee bent, that's fine. In a perfect world, we would straighten that leg all the way. And then you're gonna bring your shoulder as close to your hand as possible in a push-up while you come down. And then you're gonna press back up to the start position, bring your leg back, and you're gonna rotate to the opposite side. Extend your leg, and I want you to watch my shoulder here as I come down, because this is a key point here, is a lot of people are gonna wanna do this. See how my shoulder's coming forward like that as I come down? So I can't even do it, because what that does is it pinches your shoulder, creates an impingement. So what you wanna do is you wanna think about your shoulder blades still down and back. As you come down to the hand, you'll have a lot more flexibility and stability in your shoulder and your chest if you keep that shoulder blade back and down. So you're gonna inhale as you go down, exhale as you come up. You're gonna slowly rotate from side to side. You're gonna switch sides on every single repetition. And again, the shoulder blades go back and down. So don't let them rotate forward as the arm comes down. Think about keeping them back and down as you come from side to side. Such a wonderful push-up variation, again, for strengthening the body on one side and then the other. And it's just a great mix-up from normal push-ups as well. So practice it often, and that's how to do grasshopper push-ups with perfect form. All right, there you have it. Three intermediate and advanced bodyweight exercises that you can do from the comfort of your own home to build your chest muscle. Now, as promised, if you'd like to put these three exercises together into a complete workout that you can use to build chest muscle, then I put not one, but two workouts together for you. Right here, I put together a seven minute follow along intermediate workout using the intermediate exercises from this video. And right here, I put together a seven minute follow along advanced workout using the advanced exercises from this video. So just take your pick on whether you want to use the intermediate or advanced exercises, and then follow along to this workout two to three days a week for the next month. That's all you gotta do. Thanks, I'll see you in the next video.